Hi everyone, um, I'm back. I did a few videos during quarantine COVID and uh, I just forgot about them and then I happened to look yesterday and saw that there were a bunch on there um, as far as comments and people asking for more content and things like that. So I was kind of blown away. Um, so thank you for the support. I'm always working on something, I'm always busy and I'm going to try really hard to do a few more things and um, as far as sharing them with you guys so that way you guys can learn how to do more home improvements or vehicular repairs or things like that um, and today I actually had a little bit of something special that I got to work on um, it's a mama roo which is kind of like this fancy swing thing and um, it was broken and so I did a little bit of research online, couldn't really find a lot of information on how to work on them, and then I was kind of blown away because they're like 250, 260 bucks, like they're really expensive for what they are, and then for them to break down, I was just kind of like, okay, someone needs to put, you know, as much information out there as they can. So this is by no means a complete um, guidelines to repairs or fixing it, but it should be your go-to video so that if you have an issue with your Mamaru, um, and I did look, there are many different generations of Mamaru's out there, and the internals are all pretty similar, so um, I'm not sure which generation this is. It's one of them. It's not brand new, evidently, because they have a one-year warranty, um, but it's interesting enough where I was able to kind of figure it out and then, you know, Put together mental notes on hey this is how you do things with it um so i'm going to flip it around and i'm going to try to give the best video that i can with the things that i've noticed so far and then um i've kind of accumulated from seeing different people's experiences with these issues so i hope you guys enjoy it um let me know if there's other stuff that you guys want me to do videos on and otherwise i'm going to try to do as many different little projects as I can that you guys will like. Um, so you can see that. I was kind of blown away with 20, 26,000 people have watched the cock gun tutorial. So I will try to give you guys um, simple things because that seems to be what you guys like. All right, so without further ado, let's get started on this project. So this is the Mamaru that I'm working on today. Um, that's the panel. And I'm going to try to show you guys how to disassemble this. And that way you can disassemble um, the mechanical elements that are actually hiding underneath this white assembly. Okay, first thing, if you flip under here, this is a little button bracket and so you're going to pop that one out this is at the front of it and then you're going to go over to the back of it excuse my lack of nails today i need to do my nails and then if you go over here you'll see that there's a zipper and there's another zipper so what you're going to do is you're going to unzip both of these sides and then that will get this piece out, which is the cloth uh, baby holder portion of it. All right, and then once those pieces are unzipped, then you basically have this nice oval. And if you're in this house, you have a cat that tries to take over your project. She's cute, but I got to get rid of her. Okay, the cat is not right here. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the front of it, and there's this little push pin piece right here and you're going to put the screwdriver in or anything and it will pop and free this white piece. Actually you're going to hit this piece and this one and then you're going to do the same up here at the top of it and then you'll do that other piece. So again this one and this one these little push pins. So once you've pushed them, you're going to pull the side and then repeat the process up there. And the ones that are in the front are a little bit smaller or the top of it. So um, you can always use like a mascara wand or something like that and just put it in there. 
sometimes you have to be a little creative with things. All right, and so now we're back to the front of it and we're gonna push this and then this piece will just come off. And that's what that piece looks like once it's off of there. And then the next thing you're going to do is come over to the rear of the Mamaru and pull that up. And then you can see that that all of a sudden just ejected. So we're going to pull from the base of it and pull that guy out and not whack yourself on the back like I just did. And then now we're on the part where we're going to start taking things apart. All right, and so I've flipped it over on the back and I've already removed the screws, but there will be screws here and there will be screws around the base of it. Lots and lots and lots of screws. And the reason that this made its way to me is actually because um, it, I don't know if it was showing an error code. Um, it had two little bars illuminated and then um, it would just turn on for a moment and then shut down, turn on for a moment, shut down. And so there is something that you can do as a temporary fix. Um, if it works on your machine, then great, but otherwise you're probably going to have to do this project. So um, once I flip it over, I'll show you what you can do to see if you can temporarily fix the error. And I do apologize for not giving you guys the information um, ahead of time. It's been a minute since I did a video, so sorry about that. Um, but I have it turn around and I can show you the temporary fix that might work um, on your Mamaru to get it going again. But just know that if it's starting to have the malfunction um, with the error code or it's not moving, and um, some of them are supposed to say like obstruction, things like that, you're going to need a permanent solution for it because um, there are a couple of things inside of it. You have sensors, uh, mainly, you have, mainly you have sensors, and then there's a wheel in there that needs to be um, painted if the paint starts to chip away for one of the sensors. There's different things that can be lubricated. There's different things that can be cleaned. Um, but this should be your go-to like the first time that happens. But just know that if it happens more than a handful of times, you're going to have to go through the rest of this process. But here's what you guys have, most of you guys have probably been waiting for. Um, and then hopefully I won't see you or you won't see me again and it'll fix it and you won't have to worry about it again. So once the Mama Rose flipped back over, or if this is, you know, what works for you, what you're going to do is you're going to push the right, the left, and the power button down at the same time you're going to hold it, and then it's going to go through a motion. So I'm going to actually plug this in and see if it will do that, even though it's a little bit taken apart. It shouldn't have an issue though, and it'll show you what it's going to do in order for it to start back up again. All right, so now we're plugged in and we're going to do this. Hold it and you see it goes through a reset and I'm continuing to hold on to it this whole time. So it's going side to side and it will do that a couple of times. And it's basically trying to check like, do I have an obstruction? What's going on? And I'm holding it the whole time. It's checking, it's up and down. Is that going to work? Is everything okay? Are there any obstructions? And now that it's done with that, I this should be your fix. Um, again, temporary fix. If it's just that there was an obstruction and it glitched out and it needed some help with that. And then you should be able to go through any of the little prompts on this. It has all these little cool things that it'll do and it'll change it up and everything else. Um, but if that works for you, that works for you. But if it doesn't work for you, or if you've done that enough times where now it definitely has an issue, or if you want to find out what the permanent solution is, um, just stand by and I'm going to be showing you how to take the rest of it apart. All right, so if you have, ooh, this is super blurry. All right, so if you have taken all of your screws off, what you're gonna do is you're just going to grab the side of this guy, kind of give it a jiggle, it off. I'm doing this one-handed and then you're just sliding it over here and now you have 
part of the internals. The next step is to get this piece off of here, this top piece right here. So if you look in here, you're going to have um, two of these guys. You're gonna need an Allen wrench. I do not know the size. And then I've already taken them off here. Um, but these would be Phillips head screws. You have one, two, three, four of those. So you're going to take off all six of those bolts. Um, don't forget the, the Allen wrench. And then once you're past that step, then go ahead and play to continue because I'm going to pause to get those two out. And if you're trying to keep your screws organized during this process, um, just be excited to know that if your system doesn't work very well, all of the screws except for these two, which are clearly different because they are way longer, um, all of the screws are the same thread pattern and the same length. So that's always nice too, unless you're starting to work with any of these internal pieces. Um, and I think they did that just for it to be a little bit user maintenance friendly. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're going to pull this guy up and then you get to see the first little part of this. And then um, this base right here doesn't have anything that you need to be mindful of as far as screws to, to remove or anything like that. Um, but what I did end up doing was I moved the wires. And this is something where the different models have different variations. This particular model, um, it was woven under this piece and then um, came out this side. And this is where some of the issues that people are having with these um, machines, devices, uh, are starting to have issues. So before I take off this cover plate to show you the other things, I am going to start off with this. So evidently, Part of the issue is if the brown, black, white, and green wires um, start to kind of be pulled, you can have an issue in here underneath the cover plate where that plugs into, um, or more commonly what happens, I'm trying to get you guys in a good spot where you can see it. Grab my handy dandy pen for pointing. But basically, if you, there it is, okay, so blue. Um, so basically, there's a wire in here, or there's a, a plug in here, and when this guy is in motion, it's actually pulling this, and it's, it's kind of pulling the plug out as it's going along. And so um, what I've seen in some of the videos to do would be to add a zip tie Again, trying to get you guys at a great angle. Add a zip tie here. Give it as much slack as it needs on this portion, the part that you can't really see very well with the camera. And then give it a little tape on this side so that way it can still go back and forth as much as it needs to. Um, but it's not pulling the plug out on this side and it still has enough slack to go back and forth. Um, that's one of the more uncommon problems that I'm seeing. So um, even though I did this one first, this is something that you would want to troubleshoot as your last thing. Your first and foremost is to push the buttons like I, I said a, you know, a few minutes or a little bit ago to see if you can just reboot, reboot it if it's had a temporary issue. Um, and then we're going to get into like second, third, fourth things to try to do with the sensors and stuff like that. So you're going to, it's going to feel like you're breaking it, but you're not, you just have to use a lot of care because there are little, let me get it off of here. This is not, that's not how easy it's going to be for you. Um, but there are these little guys right here and these are just kind of holding their placeholders. You see that hole, that hole, zoom in since I don't have the pen in my hand, that hole is where one of these guys is going to go to make sure that it's in the right orientation. Um, what's actually holding it on is going to be this guy. So when you pull it, it's going to push back and it, as long as you're not using a ton of force, um, it'll be okay. So basically what I ended up doing when I was removing it is I pulled up from each side like this, knowing that the direction of that was going to be that way and that way it was just going to be a little bit easier. Hopefully that makes sense. 
So now you have a viewing of all of the different internals of this device. So I'm going to pause and put these two screws up and then we're going to start going through this. All right, so you're going to have um, at least three sensors that I've been made aware of on here to clean. You have this one. So if you were to take off this screw, you can clean both sides. Be very cautious over the, um, the, the wires and the chip that you know could, is soldered. So you don't want to damage that in any way. But if you remove this screw, you can clean both sides of it with a Q-tip and some alcohol. Um, this one does have a little um, barrel washer right here on there. So just be careful with that. It's not that it's breakable. It's more so that you know you don't want to lose it. Um, you have this sensor as well. Um, and again, your your machine device, whatever you want to call it, your Mamaru, um, may not be exactly the same, um, but the internals are very similar. So you're going to have um, another sensor in here. So you can clean this one, a little bit of alcohol, Q-tip. Um, this one is a little bit tricky. On, on the one that I was working on, there's a little white clip. There we go, focus. There's a little white clip that I was able to um, pop out in order to flip this chip over to clean both sides of it very, very, very carefully. Um, and then I didn't know if this white piece on the pole um, was part of the, you know, showing because in a lot of the other devices I saw that it was in this orientation, mine was actually um, flipped over. So I did flip that back over and then I cleaned it. If you are not as adventurous as I was with this sensor, then what you can do is, cat's back, um, is remove this screw and this screw, and then go over here, remove this screw and this screw, and then this will just bevel up. Um, or you could also remove the other two sides and bevel it up. Just make sure that you know, you're mindful that these wheels have to go back on these tracks in order for this machine to go back and forth. Um, so those are two of your sensors. And then another sensor is actually in here. So I've already removed the screws from this piece. There's a clip here, and there's a clip on this side as well. There's an orientation for you. So you need to pop this guy off, pop this guy off after you've removed one, two, three, four, five screws. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here we have um, the cover taken off and you have access to the gears little motor um, the sensor that I was talking about is right here so if you pull cat tail is in my face if you pull up right here um, after you remove this screw then this will come out All right kitty button my face is not cute kitty um, so you remove this screw, and then this one doesn't have anything, and then this will pop out. Um, then you can have access with a Q-tip, clean it with alcohol. Um, another common problem, if it's not sensors, and this is why this should be one of your first go-tos, is because you can kind of correct two problems at the same time, is, or three problems actually. You can have it where the sensor is dirty, or if you can see, there's white paint missing from this wheel. And so if this sensor is not seeing the white paint, that can also create the obstruction code. So, you know, if you're a nail person and you have some white nail polish, give it a couple strokes of white nail polish, touch it up, which is what I'm going to do just to, as a preventative because I've got the device working now. I was able to just clean the sensors and that was it. But I know that this is going to be a problem for me in the future. Um, so I'm going to paint, or, you know, in the future for this, um, I'm going to go ahead and paint these white and clean this with alcohol, which I've already done. I've already cleaned this one with alcohol, cleaned this one with alcohol. And then you can always add a little bit of lubrication, um, to it as well, just depending on how, you know, old your, your mama Roo is. Um, so there you go. All right, and we have another side note is um, 
If this is starting to wear down or if it is broken and this is your problem that you have, what you can do um, as a temporary fix is get a rubber band of about the same size, a hair tie. Um, someone in one of the other videos that I saw was talking about a hair tie temporarily to check and see if that was her problem. And then she went to a hardware store and um, got the O-ring. If I can refind her video and give her credit for that, I definitely will because that was a very wise decision to make. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do for you guys, um, since I feel like I've covered the majority of what I've seen in the videos for the obstruction um, complaint with the Mama Roos, is I'm going to plug this one in so you can see how it's supposed to work when it's operational without all the coverings on it so that if you don't have an issue like any of the issues that I've showed you, um, you might be able to troubleshoot it a little bit more. Um, I have not researched anything with the speakers or anything like that because, you know, I was just fixing this. Um, because it wasn't moving and that that was the task that I was given with this um, but if you know you have an issue with that or if this one ends up creating an issue with the sound or something um, then I'll tear it apart and figure it out but as of right now this is the information that I um, have on how this little interesting thing works so I'm gonna pause you plug it in and then go through the motions with it all right, so it is plugged in. I'm going to push play. Oh. oh, so this is the error code. So it thinks that there's an obstruction. So this is a perfect opportunity to show, since I've been playing with it, um, change my, let's see if I can hold this. So this is what this one was doing. Um, it has two bars and then it has a little Bluetooth symbol. And so, like I said before, and I showed you guys, you push and hold these. Oh, all right, let me pause it, turn, uh, unplug it, and re turn it back on. So actually, this is a perfect opportunity to show you guys what it was doing. So I'm pushing the button, and it just goes up a little bit. Push it again. It's doing the same thing. So the more I push it, it just keeps doing this back and forth. So if this is what your device is doing, you'll be able to reset it with the code or with, you know, pressing these three to clear out the error code, but it's, it could be a temporary fix for you. Um, but since I've touched all the sensors, now I've got to go ahead and clean them again. And then I will show you how it works um, with everything cleaned and everything going well. And I'm also going to, like I said, touch up the little wheels. So this little wheel is definitely got a bunch of chips and stuff missing out of it. So that was in a different video that I saw. Um, so there's also different things that can go wrong with these little machines. So that's why I tried to put it all in one video for you guys. So I've started to paint some of the pieces of this wheel and I just want to show you guys what I'm using. It's just a cheap nail polish that I've had forever. If you ever do French tips on your nails, there you go, you already have the white paint. So I'm painting it just like it's part of, you know, doing your nails. In some of the other videos I saw people say that they took it out and they use spray paint or they use some type of tape or something like that and for me it's just I'm going through painting it like it's a little nail I have a nine-year-old oops used to painting nails not used to spinning wheels and painting nails and um, that's it it's not really that difficult all right so it's going through its reset and I'm pressing play so this is how it should be working when everything is taken apart and it's normal I did go ahead and lubricate in here. I threw lubrication everywhere just except around the sensors of course pay attention to those sensors um, but the wheel the sensor there you know now that's going to be working beautifully 
I threw in a little bit of lubrication here. Um, and so that's it. That's what it's supposed to be looking like. And if something's not working that way, now you at least have a guideline. I'm going to slowly show you guys because for someone, at some point, this will be helpful. So everything starts here with this little motor and then the sensor picks up with the wheel and goes ahead and spins that. We have a gear, we have this big gear and then this gear relays over here and there you go. And then you can see the stretch of those wires if that ends up being your issue um, because they do have to have a fair amount of slack on them. Um, the other thing that I did see that's worth noting in one of the videos is um, if you, you know, of course I talk about the sensors first, um, but you can always take this screw off and then go ahead and try to turn it on and see if it's an issue in this area or if it's an issue over here um, because that's how they were able to figure out the wires. So. My two cents with um, playing, playing with this machine for a very limited amount of time is open it up, clean, well, first try your reset code that I showed you. Um, left button, right button, power button, all at the same time. Hold and press until it gets finished with it side to side and then it goes to its up and down. Um, if that doesn't work for you or if that only works for a short amount of time, then what you're going to do is take it apart uh, go for this guy first, take off his housing, check to make sure your band is still working, um, or still there, uh, check to see if you need paint on your wheel for this sensor, paint it if you need it, um, and then after you've done these two things, you're going to go ahead and get your alcohol, your Q-tips, clean this sensor, this sensor, and then that sensor, and remember, this sensor right here is the pain in the butt one. So if it hasn't it, if you can't comfortably take that out um, to clean both sides of it or get your hand under there, which if you have bigger hands, my hand, my fingers got a little stuck there, it was kind of nerve wracking. Um, then just go ahead and take this screw off, this screw, other side, take this screw, this screw, and then same thing with the other side of it, pop this out, clean that device or clean that sensor um, and that's it and then put it back together again and um, I am going to let my daughter help with different pieces of this so that um, I can start putting this thing back together again but hopefully this portion of it helps somebody in the future all right first part is putting this guy back on Doing those clips and then putting your screws in. All right, so that one now has all of its screws on. The next one is going to be putting this down and then carefully getting those clips popped back in. And for putting this cover plate in, um, what you're going to do is this piece right here nest with this piece right here. And then remember, this little guy goes into this little hole right here. And start with the rear of it near where the, um, the port is for the charger uh, or the power cord. Um, because if you do the back pieces first and then you just slide this on, then it should all fit together pretty easily. All right, so now we have the plate back on and what we're going to do is we're going to put that middle piece back on and one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to make sure that the gray clip goes on this side because this is actually the, um, the stopper for that it's for this base piece right here. So give me the metal piece. Thank you. So you, may, you want to make sure that that's out. And again, power cord is right there. And if this isn't, if this isn't open, and this is going to have some issues with lining up properly because if you don't have this lined up properly, you're not going to be able to get your um, your longer bolts in that have your Allen wrench and then you'll have your screws here and here. 
All right, hand me the long screws. The wonderful Isabel helping me. Just pop them in. All right, so my handy dandy Isabel is going to be helping with this. So screw those in. Oh, yep, that's like this. So you can use your fingers. Good job. Still working on the long bolts for the Allen wrench. Almost there. So see, even children can work on stuff. You can pop. You can test that and make sure that works. Because if it's tight and it doesn't just fall in there, you've got it properly placed um, on the blocker. All right, and so now we need four screws and the screwdriver. And again, you have screws here, 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 and there. All right, and Izzy's tightening this one. There we go, that's good, that's good. And you don't have to over tighten it, just a little bit. Okay, and then do the other ones. Okay, that's good. If you're if you're having to actually really hold on to it, you're tightening it way too much. So good job, Izzy. All right, your next step is putting this guy back in. Just pull it over. A little bit more difficult to do it with one hand. Make sure that everything matches up. Yep, Izzy grab that side. So this side is good. And I'm going to flip it over to do the screws. So you screw in all the screws, like Isabel's doing. So we have this side done. I'm not sure if somebody else had previously worked on it or not, because I this is the first one that I've come in contact with and so we have these guys too or if those are like if these get spun out and they move them over but she's going to screw in those screws be a good little helper and then we'll flip it over and we'll put the rest of it together all right so now we're going to put the centerpiece in and it's fun whenever children work, work with adults <laughs> yes it is Izzy all right so we're going to stick this piece in Mama is pretty ingenious because they actually have instructions right here. So, here, grab the pole. And we're going to stick this in here. There we go. Push, push, push. All right. And we're going to put this piece in. And then we're going to attach our sides. And then you're going to line everything up. Go ahead and push them in. There we go. And on side too. There we go. Alright, and then and you attach the zipper portions. Yeah. You so also you're in here. okay, thank you, Izzy. So you look for this piece and you're attaching it to this piece because it's a zipper. Alright, and once it's lined up with the zipper, then you just zip it. All the way. Good job. And then you're going to zip this side. There's a little stuck. All the way. There we go. Good job. And then don't forget about your little button clip. You're going to clip that. Izzy, go up there and do that one. Mommy, my daddy, I going to be able to clip it. And you have to push that little piece in the back, the gray piece. There you go. And then plug it in. And you plug it in right here. There and then you turn it on. And now you have a working Mama Roo again. 
So apologies for the video being too long, um, but I wanted it to be thorough. And now you know a ton about Mama Roos. So I hope you guys have a great day. Oh, you want to say something too? And make sure to like. <laughs> Thanks, Izzy. All right, have a great day. Bye.